Hi everybody, this is Lonnie. Thanks for coming. Uh, today's video is going to be on doing inlays with your WeCreate Vision. Um, basically, an inlay is when you take one material and you stick it inside another material to make it one. Okay. Um, basically, like this, we take we take this piece of wood, cut a heart out of another piece of wood, and we stuck them together. And that's what it looks like. Okay. Uh, there are a couple different things that you can do to do that. Uh, these are cut all the way through, okay? Those are the easiest ones to do is when you can go all the way through the material um, and do it that way. That's the easiest way to do it. Ones that are a little bit harder are those that you don't run all the way through. So here's uh, the letter K. And it doesn't come through the back side, but it still fits and is secure on this side. Um, we'll go through on how to do both of those. Um, and this is not going to be a real complex in-depth on everything. Um, I'm just going to give you the basics. You can um, expound upon those um, because once you got the basic you can take them off and run with them. Um, you can make them as complex as you want. Okay this section is for um, inlays that go all the way through. We'll touch on the others here in a bit. Um, but what I've done here is I've called up an image on the screen. Uh, and you'll note the white area around the outside of the image. It's just a basic bitmap. Uh, and we're going to be dealing with contours. So <clears throat> if we were to hit contours right now, we would get a square. And that's not going to do us any good. So we need to get the contours of the hearts. And we only want the exterior contours of the heart, not the interior exteriors. So if we hit Edit Image, Magic Paintbrush, and then click on the outside of the hearts, it takes it away. So if we do Contour now, it'll give us the outside of the hearts. If we went ahead and clicked these other portions and then hit Contour, we'd have the outside have a line on it, the inside have a line on it, this part would have a line on it, and this part would have a line on it. Um, and, uh, and right now we don't want it. Uh, if you get better at it and want to try doing the insides there too, knock yourself out. But these are just the basics, okay? So here's our image without the outside on it. We're going to hit contour and then we're going to move it. Okay? Here's our image and this is just the outline on the outside of the hearts. Okay? We're going to dump the hearts here. We don't need them. With the contour now, with this outline, instead of just having bitmat engrave listed over here, now we've got engrave, fill engrave, or cut. For this particular instance, we're going to use cut since we're going to go all the way through the image. And we're going to take this, and we're going to set it up where we need it, line it up on a piece of material, and then we're going to cut this out. And then I'll be back in just a second. Okay, I've cut that piece out, and now what we need to do, uh, if you look at the piece that you cut out, there's play in between the two pieces. Okay, it's not much, but there's there's enough there that, that it's noticeable. And what that play is, is that's the actual width of the laser beam that cut through your material. So think of it as the knife blade width, okay? So what we have to do is we have to put that back in order to make the two pieces fit together. Okay, now depending on what machine you're using and how focused that beam is and other variables, this number could change. But for the WeCreate Vision, uh, typically that number is 0.4. Now, 0.4 makes it a tight fit. Um, so if you want to play around with that even further, you can. The wooden heart that you saw at the beginning of the video was uh, done at 0.4. On both the, the pieces of wood, when I stuck them together, I had to lay the darker piece of wood on the concrete, line up the other one on top of it, put a scrap piece of wood on top of it, and hit it with a hammer. Um, no glue, no nothing, and that thing's not going anywhere. Um, the only thing that's going to change it is if it gets cold and hot enough where it flexes, then, then it might. But as of right now, it doesn't need any glue on it. Uh, some of you might want to 
want it to be that tight, others might not. So you might want to back that 0.4 off to 0.38. Um, if it's an image that you've got to use glue on and you have to have glue in that slot, um, you may want to use a, a smaller number than 0.4 in order to get that done. But for my purposes today, we're going to use 0.4. Um, and there will be topics about gluing at the end, so if you need questions about that, stay, stay by. Okay, so here we've got our image. This is the one that got cut out. That's the size it got cut out. Scales 111 by 79.4. And you notice the little padlock here is locked. Okay, That means if we move one, one image so much, it's proportionally moving both sides. So we're going to add 0.4 to one side. It doesn't matter which one. And then we don't have to worry about the other one. Now, just a, a little note. Sometimes when you do that, um, you're going to say, well, I, I'm, we'll do it here and see if it happens. Um, we're going to add 0.4 to 111. Okay, you see what happened there? Back up. Okay. The 79.4 is the height, and the 111 is the width. So we add 0.4 to the 111, and that 79.4 should jump to 79.8. But it didn't. It jumped to 79.7. And what that's doing is it's rounding the number. So the 111.4 might actually be 111.3999999 and the other one could be 79.7666 or whatever, you know. It the computer's doing its thing, so just you only got to do one side. It'll be proportional. Don't worry about it. Okay, so once we've changed it to the the size that we want, which is going to be bigger than the one that got cut out, then we're going to go ahead and we're going to cut that one out. And then um, I'll be back over to the drawing board or the machine and we'll, we'll talk over there. Okay, so here's the first piece that I cut out, and this is the second piece that I cut out. Okay, um, the other piece, this piece actually came out of here. And you'll notice, I mean, there's really not a visible size difference. 0.4 millimeters is nothing that you see with the naked eye usually. So try to keep them separate. But this is the piece we cut out second. We're going to line them up, push it in, and there it is. Okay. You see it? Okay. Now, the thicker the material, the better these will stick to get each other. Um, with this one here, um, depending on what the material is, you can do like I did on Dexter here. Um, the only thing that holds Dexter together is a piece of clear tape on the back. So depending on the, the project, that might be good enough. Um, if you got to glue it, um, you can use a backer board to glue it, or you can run glue around the inside edge, put it together, and lay it flat until it dries. Um, that's your call on how to do it. Um, Again, 0.4 is the number that I use, um, and that's flexible depending on the material that you're using. But a lot of this is trial and error. Once you get it down, you're good to go on it. Okay, that is the ones that are cut all the way through. The next one we're going to do is the ones that are not cut all the way through. Um, and in order to do that, uh, you are going to need to have one of these. This is actually used to measure the depth of the tread on a tire. Okay? And basically, the way that we use this is we're going to hold this on the wood. And then the part down here that's not touching, you push down on this. Then you can pick it up and you can look at the size here and you can see what uh, the distance is. Okay? And this is reading out at a .4. 0 0.3, 0 0.3, um, and that's the distance of this wood is 0.3, okay? And that's what you're going to need to know in a second. So we're going to go back over to the computer, and we're going to talk about this particular uh, inlaying when it's not full penetration on the back. Okay, 
Okay, basically we're back at the computer screen and I backed it off to where our image is um, the size it was before, before we added the 0.4. Um, and there it sets. What you're going to want to do is put your material in the machine, uh, stabilize it if you can so that it doesn't move because you're going to touch it and you got to make sure that it doesn't move. Um, you take your image, you're going to hit fill and grave. And then you're going to change your settings down here. And a lot of this depends on what you're doing. There are, if you were going to do this to where it's going to be a pretty image to where that you need to show it to somebody, or it's going to be the outside of a plaque or something like that, you would typically run this at, I don't know, say whatever material we're using, we're going to normally run it at a 72. And then the speed is going to be at like 250. Well, here's the thing. We're not really looking for pretty here. We are trying to gouge a hole into the wood so that we can put another piece of wood on top of it. So you can jack these numbers up a little bit. You run it at 100%. You know, I wouldn't get to the point where you're actually cutting through it, but, you know, bring it down to, you know, 100, whatever. Um, number passes. How, just, I'd do them one at a time until you see how it's going. But this line here, line density, uh, normal depth, normally most of the time it runs at 100. But if you crank this thing up to 300, it's going to bring a lot of material out of the wood. Again, trial and error will tell you how to set it. I mean, you can, if you want, you can set it to wherever your normal position is going to be. And instead of running it at 100, crank it up to 300 and see what how much you get. Um, you'll find that softer woods like pine and basswood and stuff like that um, you can mess with the line density and get a lot done but if you get into like walnuts and, and oaks and stuff like that um, you're going to really have to lay the power into it to gouge a hole into it um, so what we do is we we tune in our settings we set it off to the engraver and and it does its job and once it's it's um, done it we're going to look at how deep the hole is, and we're going to, uh, if, you, if you think it's close, then you're going to use the gauge, and you're going to see how many millimeters thick that that hole is. Um, if you have to actually touch the thing, put one hand on the material to keep it steady, and use your other hand to operate the gauge. If you got to use two hands to operate the gauge, that's fine. Just make sure that you don't move that workpiece or you'll have to start over again. Um, once, and a, a trick that I found is once you get down to the depth that you want, um, you're probably going to have to use glue. So you want to go just a smidgen deeper. And then you're also going to want to take on one of your last passes, take it off a of fill grave and hit engrave. And what that does is that concentrates the beam on the edge, inner edge of the engraving. And so if you have a little swell or, you know, a dip where it kind of curves when it comes out of the hole, doing this will um, put in a little indentation around the outside edge of it. So when you, that also helps when you put glue in to hold that piece that's above it in. So once you get to the depth that you want, now you uh, take that, you, you say you, three millimeters, you, you take um, that piece out, set it off to the side, and you take your three millimeter piece of wood that's going to go inside that hole, put it on the machine, and you're going to add 0.4 to the heart. And then you're going to put it on cut and you're going to cut this out. You're going to cut it out and then you take it over and you're going to stick it in the other piece and 100% of the time it's going to fit. And that's not the case. It's not always going to fit. You just need to take your time, work with it, and if you do it a couple times on the junk wood, you kind of get the feel for it. Um, if, depending on the piece, it's not the end of the world if it doesn't fit, go ahead and, and, and if it's a piece of, of wood that you can sand on, um, you can glue that piece in there, and let it dry, and then you can hit the top up with the sander. And you just sand the tops of them until they're level. Um, 
if you can't sand it, um, hopefully you're good at like a flat wood chisel um, to try to bring that edge down. Um, but as you play with it, um, if, if, if you're going to be drilling into the wood, get a piece of scrap wood. It's just like running a test, for, test array on your other stuff. Make sure that you have a grasp on how many times you're going to have to hit uh, fill and grave in order to get down to where you need to go. Okay, I'll be back in just a minute with some general topics. Okay, just some general topics of discussion. Um, when you're gluing up your items, um, be aware of what kind of glue that you're using, whether it's clear or whether it's um, white or any other colors for that matter. You can make glue whatever color you want. If if you're gluing up something um, and you want there to be a gap, say around the outside of your heart, um, on these two um, items, you can uh, use white glue, make sure there's a gap, stick it in there so there's white glue showing all the way around it. When it dries, it's white. It looks like an outline around the heart. Um, same thing goes, you take clear glue, dye it, and make whatever colors in there you want. Pink, blue, green, yellow, whatever. Um, if you take um, clear glue uh, and you um, take a piece of material that you're using, uh, put it up against a belt sander, get yourself a, a pile of shavings or sand grit, whatever, or wood material off of it, you can mix it in with the clear glue um, and when you go to glue it into place, if you use that and there's imperfections in between the two materials, use that and it will kind of hide when it dries um, in, that, in that groove. Um, just remember that uh, you need to allow for the glue if it's, if it's a piece that needs to be flat. Um, I think that's all I got for this. Um, practice, you'll get good at it. I mean, I, before I started doing this, I didn't have a clue as what was going on. So uh, hopefully, th hopefully this helps you, everybody. Um, like, share, and follow with everybody else. Um, and like with all the other videos that I've done, I hope that helps too.